Google's got some great ideas on how to make Android Auto even better. Maybe they're good, maybe they're just edging in on other people's territory, but it's tough to say, so uh, we're gonna get some insights from Mark at The Tesla Life. He's uh, one of the hosts of a really great weekly podcast. They're up to number 350. 55. What are you doing? You have we're to, insane. You've got you've lost your minds. I thought I was bad, but here we are. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. So I did want to say a quick thanks to uh, newest YouTube channel members, uh, Lori Bernard, Lewis, and Uzziah. Uzziah, I appreciate your support. There's a bunch of ways you can support. If you'd like, you can use my referral code, my uh, join on Patreon, YouTube, or X. There are sometimes benefits to doing that, but not always. Your support is greatly appreciated. Oh, also, I should mention uh, that uh, congratulations to Dana, who did use my referral code. And I was able to use those points to get a Tesla wall charger, which I will be uh, having added to my home in the next week or so. I found someone local who can do it and will do it, unlike my brother. So <laughs> that's super fun. Super fun. So uh, here we go. Uh, this is fun. This is fun. Google Maps uh, has got a new thing. They can power up your electric vehicle adventures with Google Maps. It It's seamlessly integrated uh, with Google Maps. Isn't that fun? You can find a oh, charging yeah. find a charging location because uh, apparently Ford's system isn't good enough. Tesla's system isn't good enough. I'm not sure what they what all the manufacturers are using. Well, it's uh, Google doing what Google does. Uh, they're a big behemoth uh, in anyone's market, and uh, they have a lot of data. They have a lot of people that use their systems, and they're using it now to collect information on EV chargers. They have them in their car, people's cars. Uh, some of them, some people use Google as their main navigation in their car. And if that's the case, that's wonderful. That that works for you. Fabulous. Um, they're they're now saying you can route uh, where you want to go. And now Google is going to happily point out some charging that is along the way based on the type of vehicle you're driving and the terrain that you're about to traverse. And uh, it's giving you some options uh, on your route uh, to wherever you're going, uh, uh, some information about where to pull off, what type of charger is there, is it reliable? They're starting to take, of course, uh, information from people on those chargers, similar to some other apps we know about already. So yes. it's, uh, it's Google being Google. They're very good at gathering data. Uh, sometimes more than you'd like, but that's a separate issue. What they're able to do is if you're planning overnight stays, we've got you covered. And next thing you know, it'll be sponsored links that got you covered, which is fine. I'm okay with that as long as they're still clearly marked. It'd be great if the whole front page of Google wasn't ads, but if I'm not paying for this, I'm not the customer, I'm the product. And they do have reviews of everything. I've had it ask me, hey, rate this Arby's location. My friend, it's an Arby's. I'm not going to leave three stars just because I chose Arby's. That's on me. But here's something mm, a little different. What's new with Android for cars at CES? This is so exciting, you guys. Director of product and user experience. This is great here. Uh, cars do more than get you from A to B. They've got maps like we we're discussing, and electric vehicles compatible with Android Auto can share real-time battery information with Google Maps. Mm. How do you feel about that? <laughs> mm. That's mm. that's what you said. Google likes to collect data and as much data as they can get about you or the product you're driving. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is that's what's going on here. In fact, in fact, it's not just Google, Apple too have developed these systems uh, that are going to run natively on vehicles. And in fact, it's actually scared some of the vehicle manufacturers to a point where they're concerned that their own customer is being whittled away from them by using these native apps that they were happy to supply the customer with initially. But now they're wondering, did we do the right thing here? Have we already released the the uh, horse out of the barn and we're not going to get it back because uh, this is something that uh, has them worried. Your data is extremely valuable, extremely valuable. If you don't understand that, look at the number of 
free users a platform has, and then use that to divide their market cap. And that is your value as a customer, as a product rather. So fine. Again, if you're not paying, you're not the customer. Now, are there any other ways out there? Boy, who could, who would know to get there? Well, if you drive a Tesla, you can, you can use what the car has. You can use this website or you can just punch in the destination and get all the same information. It would be nice if not just Tesla, but all of them, when you say, Hey, Hey, um, where's a Starbucks? And it goes, Oh, there's one three miles away, uh, five miles, oh, six miles away. That's behind me. You jackass. I'm not <laughs> turning around at the next exit. <sighs> now my day is a half hour longer because tell me along my route, along my route. And you can put in your car and tell it what you've got, and it'll figure out your route for you, the quickest one. Um, are there any others like that that you can think of? Actually, um, uh, GM has just uh, started their own system because, of course, they stopped supplying uh, Apple and Google in their new EVs. Um, so they're going, they're striking it out on their own. Obviously they're using some sort of database from somebody else, but they're branding it themselves. Uh, so that's someone that traditionally has not been a software company. And it'll be interesting to see if they can actually successfully do it. But um, there's, a, there's a few companies now that are trying to strike out on their own because they've seen, as you mentioned, Brian, about how customers are, are really are the product. Their own customers are becoming a product of Google and Apple. Well, there's also PlugShare. They ah. they might have a little bit of information about a few chargers here and there. And the more you zoom in, the more you find. Um, it just keeps going. Uh, this is fun. And then I feel like there are other ones as well. ChargePoint does their own, but that's a, that's a single um, provider of uh, charging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You're right. A better route planner, another excellent option. Yeah. And these companies all have different benefits. I don't know, man, Google, it's good. It's a good company. It does good work, but it's, a, it's an evil company doing evil work. I mean, it is, <laughs> they used to have, you remember Google's motto, don't be evil. They removed that. That yeah. is no longer one of their core objectives. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I would say, I don't know why, but Google. That's, removes. that's worrying right there. That's just worry. When you say something like that, they actually removed it from their list of things that their, their company governance. It's their former motto from their code of conduct, following their corporate restructuring into alphabet, they change it to do the right thing. But you know, that's for the company that do the right thing for shareholders is what that says. <laughs> I mean, oh, do the right, goodness. I mean, do the right thing. Be evil. Don't get me wrong. Be evil. But uh, yeah, we believe strongly in the long term, we'll be better served as shareholders to buy a company that does good things for the world, even if we go forego some short term gains. But you know what? Meh, meh, <laughs> meh. So, yeah. And so, so we've got, we've got the situation where they are now going to collect more and more information on the EV world. And uh, that's what they're after. Uh, and of course, with the amount of penetration they already have into the cell phone market and so many people using those cell phones as their, their prime navigation as to whether they're walking, riding a bike or now driving a car, they're going to collect it and they're going to get a lot of information. And you know what? It's, it's going to be solid, but they're going to be mining that information every second. Aggressively. And uh, that's fine. That's great. The good news is if you don't have an option and your car has uh, Android Auto, you're going to get better charging information for now. You can contribute. You can leave reviews. You can rate your experience. But if you have a Tesla, you don't need this. If you have a Ford, you really don't need it. It will be apparently embedded into your Mach-E and Lightning, but they've already got Blue Oval, which is their app that should be handling this for you. I haven't used it myself. I don't know what the experience is like when I tried using it on the web. It was recommending one stalls at dealerships that were 12 kilowatts. So uh, don't 
That's not a good sign. Don't put that on the list, if you don't mind. I mean, that's insane. But all right, whatever. Uh, Mark, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Should I be asking you or should I be asking the folks at home? You should be asking the folks at home. I think we should ask both. Uh, if you think I missed anything, now's your chance. Uh, I didn't think so. So, nope. uh, guys, uh, leave the comments. We got to know what we're doing here. Uh, what do you use in your car to navigate? Um, I use old strangers at gas stations sitting in rocking chairs. And they give great directions. You go down... About four or five, you can't miss it. On the left, it's a beat up car. Turn there, you'll be fine. Doesn't say which way. Doesn't matter. I'm not. Gives you a lot of excitement, though. I bet. I guarantee. You never know where you're where you're going. Every time someone has said to me, "You can't miss it," I I pause and I say, "My friend, I guarantee you, I can. I assure you." I was in Missoula and we were going out to the old historic fort, and I said. Where is it? And they said, go out this road. You can't miss it. And I said, oh, how far? Not far. Just a little ways. Just, just outside. Once you get out of town, it's right there. And I drive out of town and I'm driving for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh my God. And there it was. There it was. Guys, I get it's Montana, but this is not just out to you. It might be just outside of town. To people from states where people live, this is crime. And you could have left Delaware twice. Elon. <laughs> all right. All right. You know, guys, if you get a chance, like subscribe, do all that stuff, maybe uh, head over to the old, the Tesla life there, see what he's up to uh, him and Patrick and Casey do some fantastic work and have a lot of fun. And that's in case you couldn't tell something I look for in a channel while getting informed. It doesn't feel like education if it's entertaining. So uh, thank you. And everybody else, you know, like, subscribe, do the usual. Stay tuned, stay juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots through your smart speaker, I guess. 